Hi everyone. Today I want to finally return to a series that I began, oh goodness, probably the beginning of February, Use Your Stash. And today I'm bringing some decorated envelopes that I've been working on. I'm going to show you what I've done so far and then we'll work on some together in a craft with me. Now I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with Rachel and Gail and Tracy and Wendy, you know, they're beautiful creations. So I thought I'd try my hand at it too. I love decorating things for my journals and I love collage. And I have all of these vintage books of all sorts that I certainly do need to use up. So I thought it was a good idea to work on this stash. This one is from A Time Life book from the 70s. Now back in the 70s I had this actual series and um, they sent one a month. They were really really neat and lately I've been able to get a few of the the ones that I had and it's been a lot of fun to work with them. So I started with folding it into an envelope, very simple fold, where you just take the full page and you bring it up most of the way and then do a flap and then I put some washi on the edge. We've got some printables here. This is a Tracy Fox printable. That's a Nick the Booksmith. That's some vintage music sheet and this is some vellum blueprint that I was gifted. And it's just got this neat, really soft texture. Next, I have a map from an atlas. And so this one would be a really good one to leave open for journaling. You can either leave it open or you can sew down the sides of these and either include them in the center of your signature or you can just stick them in a tuck somewhere. This one I decorated the front with. These are a couple of Nick the Booksmith printables as well. It's a Tracy Fox. Some of that vintage music sheet and washi. This here is a French, from a French play from the 20s. And the paper is just so fragile that I really am not able to use it as part of my journals because they have to withstand a, a stress test that I put pages through before I'll include them in my journals. But they're perfect for collaging and it brings a really neat element to your collage. This is a vintage music sheet that I've used and I sewed some fabric on the edge. I have Tracy Fox printable, uh, Rachel Roxy Creations printable, some book pages, and this is a ruffle from some tracing paper that I inked and glued down. And we just have different book pages. This I used that same along the edge so it would match. And Tracy Fox printable. And that's just some stamping on a piece of dictionary page. This is from a Monet book that I was gifted that the book itself is in really sad shape, but the paper was still in excellent shape. So I knew I wanted to use all those beautiful backgrounds for something, and this looked like the perfect way to use them. So I added a little bit of uh, some, some French writing on, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, German writing on the edge of that one. And this has a security envelope window that I've glued down with some images underneath. I fussy tore one of the uh, images from that Time Life gardening book and stuck it under there over top of some of the music. So once you get started with these things, they're kind of addicting. Here's a, an index page from the Time Life magazine um, book. And another window, security window, and printables. And this, I wanted to mention about the sewing. Like many of you, I'm sure I started sewing when I was a kid. And one of my biggest hang-ups that kept me from ever getting really good at it, I think, is I needed everything always to be perfect. Well, as many of you know, you're never going to get sewing perfect. 
So it was always a source of frustration for me. Well, that's the one wonderful thing about this type of art. It's so freeing because you could get to play with it and you can be just as wonky as you want to be with it and it actually adds to the character of the things. In fact, the more wonky you make it, probably the more perfect it really ends up being. <laughs> All right, and then just continuing on here. This one, I did more of the traditional fold where I used my envelope scoreboard to make the envelope out of a piece of Atlas Index. Put some washi on the edge of that one. Security envelope, large window on this one. And there's some more, I decorated it with a few different security envelope back uh, insides. And then this is a dragonfly punch that I stuck on the uh, image and then inked around the edge there just to show, have it show up a little bit, a little bit of a scrap of watercolor paper there. You can use all of your little bits. That's the neat thing about this. All of your scraps of fabric and all of those papers that are everywhere. And to, not to mention all of those great book pages and labels and everything that we've got stashed away. So continuing on with the sort of things. This one here has a little piece of washi from Bella's Bits and Buys that um, Gail is always talking about. Any of you haven't checked out Bella's Bits and Buys, I would definitely encourage you to, although <laughs> it's addicting. Be careful. And some more washies and paper. So then I wanted to show you what they look like before I start putting anything on. I've just taken a piece of index, cut it to the size that I want that would work. And let's see, this is... Seven by four and a half. So it ended up being a, the, the full width of the atlas by seven long. And then I just folded it most of the way. And then that would make the flap there. And here's an atlas map page that I've done the same thing with. And here's some of those Time Life gardening books pages and you can fold it either way you just get totally different looks if you want another more traditional envelope folded this I've added sometimes you know and it's interesting because I'll start different ways too and we'll we'll get into that as we're actually working on this but sometimes this one I decided to start with some of those washies and put those down and then I'm going to build around that. So that's just a few of those. And then here's some of those little security envelope windows that I started on. And I've already done some collaging inside those and then I'll just figure out where, what type of a thing I want to use it on, where it matches. And that, I just got a little piece of that washi just stuck on there. It's like the beginning and I'll figure it out as I go what looks good with it. And a couple others. And then what I'll do is I'll take a security envelope and open it up, carefully opening it up on the sides, and I'll stick scrap of paper or whatever. It could be even just brown paper where the windows are. So that way it's kind of keep in keeping more with that kind of vintage looking aesthetic that's on the outside. And this is just all different scrapbook papers and some book pages. And then this is nowhere near finished, of course, but it just shows you where it kind of starts. And scrapbook papers and some, just some brown packaging and a children's book page and a paper doily. I got a, a lot of this inspiration from Rachel, Roxy Creations. She does this too, where it's uh, it gives you lots of journaling area on this. And I could continue on and collage on the inside of this as well if it was to be an open thing this one I think I'm going to close up I'll probably sew the sides so really that's all I need to do on the inside and so it just needs a little bit of finishing and decorating and then that one will be ready to go okay now for supplies you will need to start you're going to need a base 
of your envelope and for that you can use virtually any type of paper that's going to be oh approximately 7 by 11 and that's to get you a 5 by 7 envelope when you're finished um, like I had mentioned you can use old gardening books or atlases or just any kind of book that has some kind of a index in the back you can use all of the junk mail that we get all the time you can use those envelopes and those work perfectly well you can either leave them with the window and have it be a peek through of whatever you've put inside it or whatever you've collaged down inside it or you can just totally cover over that and pretend there never was a window to begin with you can use any kind of paper really the sky's the limit I would definitely say though to get something that's durable enough though where you won't have to worry about it ripping too easily and now like I said this started out this is most of the page I don't think you can see exactly to the edge of my uh, measuring board on here well I'll take it up where you can see and this well let's see this measures 7 by 11 and that'll give you like I said uh, a 5 by 7 envelope once you're finished you take and fold that up almost all the way leave oh I don't know three quarters of an inch to an inch just because it makes it a little bit easier to get the thing in and out of and then you fold over the rest of it for a flap or if those of you who want to use this is okay this is more of a traditional looking if you want to use your envelope scoreboard that one ends up being a nine inch square and the nine inch square i'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this I don't, it's kind of remedial but i'll just that also gives you just about a five by seven as well and then i did this one just to be fun i decided to go ahead and do one of the square ones that's on there in the measurements so again those all those types of papers um the, here's some more of those monet images and that started out Oh, that was about 10 by six and three quarters. Sometimes you have to work with whatever the page is and that's fine. You know, you just get it down to a manageable size. The, I think the biggest thing is, is I, and I have so many large books like these atlases and whatever that you got to make sure you do cut them down because otherwise you're going to end up with this humongous envelope that might not even fit in your journal or whatever. But who knows, maybe you'd want to use it for something else. Maybe it could be part of a cover of a journal itself. So I went ahead and, and folded up a few of these. Oh, this is a children's book page. The cute little images that are on children's book pages. I thought that could be fun to try to incorporate. So I'll probably be a lot more whimsical with that one. And I just thought these would all be fun to work with. And I'll work on these as well. So you can see both ways. Um, starting with this. It just makes it easier for me to... Now, when it's this sturdy of an envelope, you really don't have to tear it apart unless you're planning on leaving it open. But it makes it easier for me to glue down the paper here if I do open it. And then, you know, sewing it shut adds to the character of the thing, too. So it's kind of fun. And you just gently take it and tear it like this. Sometimes I'll just run it down like that. Sometimes they work better than others, just depending on how much glue they had on them. This one's going to be fussy. Of course. Well, <laughs> that's the thing with doing things on camera. So anyway, then you have this piece to work with here. And like I said, you could either collage the whole thing if you want to leave it open. Because, I mean, that'd be perfectly acceptable sewn into the middle of your signature. And then you could either close it up when you were done working on it. And it'll peek through here. Or you can just leave it open and it's two pages. And then this other. Now it's got that same style. 
there's other ones i would i would take the ones if you're going to open it i would take the ones that are glued on the side rather than the kind that are glued down like this just because they are a little harder to get back together again but you know certainly give them a try too you may come up with a really cool design that could only be achieved with that type of an envelope so anyway, there we go. We got the, that one worked nicely. See, they do. They do. So we're all set and ready to go with those. One of the things that's been keeping me busy these past few months is trying to sort and organize my beautiful mess. So I came up with a thing that's certainly not unique to me, but just a way that I could get some sense of order to all of the chaos. I mean, if you could see the rest of the surface right now, I'm, I'm covered. I've got the area that is my glass mat to work with, and that really is it. <laughs> so it was imperative that I start kind of going vertical with things. So I thought, you know, getting these page protectors and putting like items together, like in here I've got doilies and tracing paper and tissue paper of various sorts. I've got some of that. Let me show you that paper a little bit closer that I talked about before, the paint, painter's paper. It comes in a big roll that's, oh goodness, I think about a foot and thick. I'll have it forever. In fact, it may be part of my, you know, um, ephemera packs because this definitely is worth sharing with people. It's, a, it's a, just a gorgeous green that works so well with botanicals. It's like craft paper, but green. So anyway, getting back to where I was with this, and of course, look at it, it's all trying to escape. So that's all the really lightweight tissues and the things that are kind of translucent. Here are our security envelope bits, and I've got a ton of them because they send a ton of them and when they're really cool designs i just can't bring myself to toss them so there they are but they're fun to work with in collage and then next i have pieces that would be really good for journaling on i've got just solid pieces of craft paper pieces of books that i've torn apart these are really wonderful because these are vintage books and so they're all yellowed with age of varying sorts and that's that extremely fragile just to show you how fragile that paper is okay i fold it okay let me fold it i'll get i'll show you my litmus part of my litmus test if i can fold it like this and bring it back out and i can see i don't know if it can show on my on the uh, camera here but if you can see the cracks well, and then I take it back this way. That totally will do it. <laughs> that won't work, clearly. But it works perfect for collage. So this is the perfect application for this. And I've got some... Oh, these are eco-dyed coffee filters. Ones that just didn't really have a great impression. But they're a really nice background to be used for journaling on. So I've got parchment paper and i've got some that's got lines ledger varying swords and graph and just anything that you could write on that's what's in that that pack and here i've got a bunch of book pages some that i've stamped on already i've got music all that vintage music sheet i've got a bunch of pieces of that i've got some old schematics and things from old uh, encyclopedia set from the 50s so lots of fun text in that pack and then last but not least this is scrapbook paper and journaling card packs and just all sorts of patterns and color to play with I've just taken pieces of scrapbook paper that I had no idea what I was going to do with it otherwise, so I just kind of tore it up into manageable hunks. And so, like I said, I've got those all in 
page protectors and then I've got them all stacked together in a basket so that way rather than take up the chaos that they used to when they were all in their little piles or individual baskets now they take up the space of one basket so thought I'd give you that little tip and see how that works for you other things you'll want to gather are the things that we'll use to decorate these envelopes and I've pulled out a selection of napkins and washies and I've got fabric scraps of various colors and styles and little just little pieces of ephemera words this is from packaging and I thought that would be really cute to add the details um, stamps you can cut circles out of scrapbook paper and those are fun elements to use or to stamp on or just even just out of cardstock and they can be stamped on paper doilies or of course you could use fabric doilies as well mostly what I've been trying to do with this is stay as thin as I can so that way it doesn't bulk up your journal but feel free you can certainly use fabric doilies uh, those of you who saw my tea bag stamping I've got some of that or on tissue paper stamping on um, uh, tracing paper all sorts of things like that that you can add interest elements on there little cut aparts Tim Holtz cut her parts there and those oh goodness those ooh, I hate to say it's printables from one of the gals that I mentioned earlier <laughs> I don't want to say the wrong one more scrapbook paper more Tim Holtz scrapbook paper pieces pieces of map um, scrapbook paper oh no that's packaging that's another thing always be aware of your packaging you just never know where you're going to find some really cool patterns and designs and things. These are little digital printables from Johanna of a bunch of little photo uh, vintage photographs. And so those will be a lot of fun to I haven't started using those yet. Those will be fun to add in. We'll work on that too. I've just got all sorts of things in here because you just never know what direction you want to go in. But I just stack them in a little, one of those little tiny bins. And it's in the middle of the chaos here, but that way it's all handy. Anything else you can think of, there's the sky's the limit. Anything you want to decorate with, go ahead and grab it so that way we can begin.